hi. Um, can you just remind us of your name? Hello, I'm Carol. Hi, Carol. And the name of your project? I haven't got that far yet. So the, the idea in this is that whatever question you're asked, you do know it. And then okay. you'll just go... Changing perceptions. Yeah, changing perceptions. Thank you very much. So it's great to have you here, Carol. And we're really, really excited to be working on your project, Changing Perceptions, with you. And I'm going to give you two minutes now to um, introduce your project to us. And when that two minutes is up, I'll let you know. Okay? Thank you. Okay. I have got very interested in what the word photochoreography means. What is photochoreography? Is it a projection on the screen? Is it people dancing to something they've planned already? Is it uh, a set of images that people are interpreting? I get quite exercised because I don't think that's photochoreography. I think photochoreography has to be completely participative. And I've thought about this for a long time. And I, what I want to do is I want to use live photography projected somewhere, probably on the ceiling, to show people a completely different perspective to the one they are seeing as the audience. That means I need people or props or things like that to be doing one thing apparently to the audience and another thing within themselves um, because they'll be taking the photos as they dance so that the audience will come in, they won't necessarily understand what's happening, they'll slowly understand the live projection is live and they'll slowly relate to the dancers through the projection as well as through the, what they're seeing. And I'm not a choreographer. Okay, thank you. Yeah, do you want to stop there? Yeah, that's great. Okay, so that gives us a bit more time for... Okay, um, I'm going to start with the first question. So, Carol, in Changing Perceptions, how do, you, how do you see the role of the audience? What I mean by that is, what do you think that the audience will get from participating in, in the piece? I want them to have their ideas changed. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather it wasn't one of these classic negative to positive fighting war things, because I'd rather have a positive message. But I want them to slowly understand that the perspective that they thought they had isn't the only perspective, and to be very slowly shown it. So they come to it themselves rather than have it shoved in their faces. And when you mentioned just now the, um, the usual negative versus positive experience, could you say a little bit more about that? The only way that I can think of doing this is through, for example, fighting, where the audience may think people were fighting in a dance battle, but actually they weren't. Um, or by, by some kind, I don't know if anybody remembers, there was an advert by The Guardian with a skinhead. Yeah, I do remember. And it shows one side, it shows a skinhead running along the road. Another side, it shows him tackling a businessman with a briefcase. And the, ma the man's got his briefcase like this. And from the other side, you see that there's um, rubble falling from the ground and the skinhead is actually defending the man in the briefcase from the falling rubble. That's the kind of switch I want to get in people's perceptions. Mm -hmm. And in terms of a venue or a setting or a situation, what would be the ideal place to host this event for you? In public, in a cafe or a bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I'm going to open up for questions from the floor. Um, so in your example there, you just mentioned um, some stereotypes like the skinhead and the man with the briefcase. Um, do you imagine any of your dancers or performers having a sort of narrative or, you know, being people? Or is this um, more of an aesthetic sort of shift in perception? I think I'd prefer it to be people with some kind of narrative. Okay. I don't think that you can change people so easily on an abstract basis. You said that the ca there's the dancers are taking pictures. Is that what you meant when they are using the camera? Yeah. How, how are they? What is their task, or what, how do they make those decisions? Is it in relation to the audience or the narrative? Both in relation to the narrative, but they have to respond to the, the audience. You have to display whatever interpretation you want so that they see the perceptions, but you have to s also see how the audience is behaving. So. And the, those photographs are projected onto the... Live. Live, okay. Yeah. Yes, more questions, please. So this isn't, I'll ask a question if I feel like it. This is your task now. You have to ask questions to help her. 
So well, this is, we are working collaborative now, so invent some questions, please. Um, how strictly do you want to control the perspective of the audience? I don't understand the question. Uh, how in control of um, where the audience sits, stands, observes, are you uh, w wanting to be in control of that, that perspective? I want the audience to believe they're free, whether they can practically be or not, is uh, a logistical thing. So, uh, yeah, if, they, if the audience can wander around, that's even better. Do you have a particular theme? You know, you said you don't want it to be positive or negative or uh, about the fighting thing, but do you, do you have a framework or context um, story? I have some ideas around, you know, the, the little metro things where they have, you were wearing your blue jacket and you look so gorgeous. Well, for me, they're not love stories. They're stories of missed opportunities. And I have a kind of idea that that might be fun to develop. Okay, great. I'm going to take one at that and then come to you. Yeah. And when you're thinking about perceptions, are you just uh, right now thinking about visual perceptions, or would you also be interested in figuring out if there's a way to capture like a tactile or auditory um, aspect of the dance that could also change audience perception? I would love to do the auditory aspect. I think um, tactile might be a little bit too ambitious considering health and safety regulations. Okay, thank you. And I've got two up the front here. Have you thought of, um, in relation to freedom of the public, have you thought of, uh, because if, when I think of choreography, I think of some set types. Have you thought of um, making dancers respond to, to the audience, um, to audience initiatives? So for example, audience take pictures and uh, dancers are responding, are like reacting to these pictures, because it could be quite surprising to, uh, change the dancer's pers perspectives rather than the public perspective? It could, but no, I want to change the public's perspectives in this case. Also, I couldn't afford all those cameras. Could be an exchange, don't you think so? Um, it could be, but that won't change the public's perceptions. It will change the dancer's perceptions. I don't want to develop my dancers. I want to change the headspace of the people that wander in. It okay. is. It's, it's a fantastic choreography, but it's not mine. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take one last question, I'm sorry, and then we have to move on. Is there a particular type of person you're hoping to reach in the audience? Anyone who... Anyone. Anyone. Um, when I've done it myself, you meet somebody, you put them into a little pigeon box, and then something happens and you realise you were completely wrong. I just want to help people understand that they can be completely wrong. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to invite a colleague in to it.